Just before midnight on March 12, 1928, in the quiet darkness of a California canyon, a monster was born. A concrete behemoth holding back 12 billion gallons of water didn't just break, it vanished. In its place, a 140-foot wall of water erupted, a tsunami-like force that would kill over 400 people in one of the worst engineering disasters in American history. This is the story of the St. Francis Dam, a monument to ambition that became a tombstone, all because of deadly flaws its legendary creator refused to see. In the early 1900s, Los Angeles was a city with explosive dreams, but it was dying of thirst. The city needed a hero, and his name was William Mulholland. A self-taught engineering genius, Mulholland rose to become the head of the city's water supply. He masterminded the Los Angeles Aqueduct, a 233-mile artery that siphoned water from the distant Owens Valley, allowing LA to finally bloom. His famous words upon its completion, there it is, take it. Los Angeles did, and Mulholland became a living legend. But the aqueduct was vulnerable. To truly secure LA's future, Mulholland needed a massive local reservoir to act as a buffer. He chose a spot in San Francisco Canyon, about 40 miles northwest of the city, to build his final masterpiece, the St. Francis Dam. Construction began in 1924 on a curved concrete gravity dam designed to hold back water through its own immense weight. Brimming with confidence from his past successes, Mulholland took personal control. His reputation was so immense, his designs went unchecked. It was a fatal mistake. The first critical error was the location. The dam straddled a fault line separating two different rock types. The western wall was a crumbly conglomerate, the eastern an unstable Polona schist that deteriorates when wet. Geologists later discovered this eastern side was built right on top of an ancient landslide. Soaking this ground with billions of gallons of water was like waking a sleeping giant. The second error was the design. Mulholland raised the dam's height by 20 feet but never widened its base to handle the massive increase in pressure. He also omitted critical contraction joints, which allow concrete to expand and shrink safely. From the start, the St. Francis Dam was a catastrophe waiting to happen. As the reservoir filled, the dam showed signs of stress. Cracks appeared and water seeped from its walls. Workers were ordered to patch the leaks, but the seepage never stopped, creating constant anxiety for those living nearby. On the morning of March 12, 1928, mere hours before the collapse, dam keeper Tony Harnischfeger found a new muddy leak. This was a terrifying sign. It meant water was eroding the dam's very foundation. He called Mulholland, who arrived for a brief inspection. Blinded by pride and faith in his own work, Mulholland dismissed the leaks as normal, sweating, declared the dam safe, and returned to Los Angeles. That night, the reservoir was filled to capacity for the first time, just three inches from the top. At 11.57 p.m., the power flickered in Los Angeles, the first signal. The waterlogged eastern canyon wall, the site of the ancient landslide, gave way. The rest of the dam held for a few moments, then disintegrated completely. Twelve billion gallons of water were unleashed in a single, thunderous roar. The flood scoured the canyon to bedrock, sweeping away the dam keeper and his son. Their bodies were never found. The churning wall of water tore down the Santa Clara River Valley at 18 miles per hour. It obliterated a powerhouse and a construction camp, killing 164 of the 170 workers inside. The torrent was so powerful, it carried 10,000-ton blocks of the dam for miles. For 54 miles, all the way to the ocean, nothing was safe. The human cost was staggering as the deluge ripped through the sleeping farm towns of Piru, Fillmore, and Santa Paula. The story of the Luna family became a heartbreaking symbol. As they tried to flee, the current swept five of their children into the darkness. Their mother survived, but the children were lost. But there were also heroes. Telephone operators, the Hello Girls, stayed at their switchboards, frantically calling downstream residents to warn them. In Santa Paula, two motorcycle officers, Thornton Edwards and Stanley Baker, raced ahead of the flood with sirens wailing, getting people to higher ground and saving hundreds of lives. 
By the time the floodwaters emptied into the Pacific Ocean at 5.30 a.m., they had left a 54-mile path of utter destruction. As the sun rose, the Santa Clara Valley was revealed as a wasteland of mud and debris. The official death toll was put at 431, but is now believed to be closer to 600, as many victims were migrant workers whose disappearances went unrecorded. The disaster shattered William Mulholland. At the coroner's inquest, he took full responsibility. Don't blame anyone else. You just fasten it on me. If there was a human error, I was the human. He later quietly added that he envied the dead. Though cleared of criminal charges, his career was over. He retired in disgrace a year later and lived the rest of his life in seclusion. The St. Francis Dam disaster is a terrifying lesson in what happens when ambition and pride go unchecked. These stories of incredible engineering and equally incredible failure are etched into our history. If you found this story compelling and want to explore more about how history has shaped our world, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss what's next. The investigation confirmed the dam's fatal flaws, unstable geology, and a compromised design. The disaster was a brutal wake-up call for the engineering profession. In its aftermath, California passed the nation's first dam safety laws and began regulating civil engineers, setting a new standard for the country. Today, the broken, chalky white ruins of the St. Francis Dam still lie in the canyon, a silent, permanent memorial to a city's relentless ambition, the catastrophic failure of one man, and the hundreds of lives drowned by a flood born not of nature, but of human error. Thanks for watching.